Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here with another routine tropical weather update here for Monday, May 19th, 2025. To start off the video, here's a look at the latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we take a look at the satellite imagery here in great detail, we do have a couple of things that are sticking out to my eye. First of all, we have this area of disturbed weather that is moving off to the northeast away from the northern windward and leeward islands here of Puerto Rico, as well as the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola. You got some rain out of this, but not as much as what we first thought, but what we do have down here in the deep tropics is the intertropical convergence zone definitely active out there you can see a lot of convection that is billowing up around where that intertropical convergence zone is strong trade winds definitely evident here on the satellite imagery and that's keeping things nice and cool out here relatively from where we were last year where sea surface temperatures were through the roof they were well above average compared to now and it looks like we have a little bit of saharan dust that is coming off of africa still but nothing significant yet now with that being said the good news here is there is no tropical cyclone formation in the next two days across the entire atlantic in the gulf of mexico and the caribbean and that goes also for the next seven days no tropical cyclone formation at all on this map so nice good clean slate as far as the tropics go but you know it is still pretty early right we all can agree it's only the 19th of may and we have a very long ways to go we don't officially begin the atlantic hurricane season until june the first and so it is still very early but it's always a good idea that we do these routine tropical weather outlooks just in case if something sneaks under the radar right so with that being said here's a look at the latest gfs model this is the global forecasting system this is the american model that i like to use in these videos unless we get a named storm then we're going to have to compare models between the gfs the euro the canadian the icon model and look at early signals so with that being said, here's a look at the forecast for uh, to, for this afternoon, and you can see nice, good Azores eye out here that is pretty strong, 1,046 or 1,026 millibars, bringing those trade winds that are around 20 to 30 miles an hour, especially over the the Caribbean. It's where the trade winds tend to be strongest because of the gap flow that develops here and also some strong winds coming off the Gulf into the Midwest. That is why there is a big time severe weather outbreak that is anticipated here over the high plains. If you want to relate to the tropics, that's what's pretty much going in the subtropics right now is that severe weather outbreak today. Strong to intense tornadoes are going to be a thing with that. But as we go into tomorrow afternoon, still this Azores high still remains very dominant. Unlike last year, it wasn't very dominant at all. And that is just because our uh, our NAO up here was very different than what it is this year. And so that is why we have our high where it should be this time of the year. And this is going to continue all the way for the next several days. That high is not going anywhere. 1,031 millibars is going to be the thing. And then, in fact, it gets even stronger out beyond the 10-day forecast as we go into early June. The very early part or the first official day of the Atlantic hurricane season, we're not seeing anything out there out in the main development region. However, there are some early signals from the GFS and we got to be careful for this. This is 312 hours out. There is an area of disturbed weather that we are going to have to watch over the next several days. This is, again, very far out. This is June 1st, and it's only the 19th of May. So between now and then, a lot can change. But this is going to be the area we typically watch for any tropical development with the Central American Gyre. That's where you get winds that come in out of the southwesterly here. You can see that. And then the winds curl around here, and you get this large gyre. And anything within this large gyre can spin up pretty quickly, and that's how we can get 
early season development, especially like in the first two or three weeks of June because that's Central American gyre. So this is going to be the area to really watch once we go into very late May into early June. Another product that I wanted to mention in this video is the 850 millibar vorticity plot. This is at 5,000 feet above the surface and we're looking at a three plot system. The color shading here on your screen denotes lots of vorticity, so the redder colors indicate much stronger spin in the atmosphere. So you can think about this, right? The stronger the spin, usually we get a tropical cyclone. If it's all the way down here, right? If it's up here to the north, it's usually just a typical cyclone in the high latitudes. Nothing to be concerned about, right? Because its wind field is usually spread apart. But then we get these height lines, and this is basically showing us if there's any low-level ridging, low-level high-pressure centers that are located. And then these wind barbs that you see down here denote which way the wind is coming from and how strong. So down here in the deep tropics, this is an easterly flow that is blowing from Africa all the way into Venezuela. And then the flow does this. So you can kind of get an idea. This is where our subtropical ridge is basically pretty much located um, in the next six hours. And as we go forward in time, this is how the ridge usually sets up in about six days, six to seven days. Nice, large, large scale ridge that is in place. And usually, if the atmosphere is ripe enough, we get any tropical waves that come off of Africa. They can spin up very quickly and move generally off in this general direction. And also, they can generally gain latitude too. But I also want to show you the current vorticity plot here. This is as of 18z. So this just got released nearly five minutes ago, very soon ago. And what we have here is these orange and red colors that denotes what we're seeing right now. And when you put this into a GFS model perspective, right here, this is basically the analysis. Well, this is the analysis. And this is basically the forecast. It really matches up pretty well, right? Not exactly, but it does a pretty good fine job. So this is where we have spin in the atmosphere. Nice good cyclone over the high plains. And that is what's giving us the severe weather today. And that's why there's going to be strong to intense tornadoes in the high plains from Oklahoma into Kansas. But I also want to show you the current wind shear values. This is again as of 18Z. And I know this is really hard to see because there's a lot of lines. And I totally understand that. So if you leave a comment and say it's hard to see this map, I do apologize. But to easily understand, this is the northeast up here. This is Florida. This is the Gulf of Mexico down here. This is Honduras. Uh, and then over here is Venezuela. Over here is uh, um, basically the Dominican Republic as well as Hispaniola. Then you got uh, Puerto Rico. Then you got Jamaica. You got the Cuban area. Then, of course, you got the, the Bahamas. So I hope that un um, kind of clears things up with confusion. And then here are your leeward and windward islands over here. So what this is showing us is how strong is the vertical wind shear and these red contours right here indicate that shear values are very, very unfavorable. We're looking at shear between 50 to 70 knots. So when you look at it from a tropical weather standpoint, this is very volatile. This is hostile for any tropical development. And that is why we don't see anything right now because these upper level winds the air is too dry, is just not favorable. Once this wind shear backs off gradually as we go into, say, July, August, and especially in September, you name it, we're going to get a lot of activity. Now with the tropical weather forecast out of the way, let's take a look at our current sea surface temperatures because they continue to warm at a pretty quick rate. Not as quick as what we saw last week, but still quick none nonetheless. So what we have here is in the northwestern Caribbean, we are seeing sea surface temperatures between 82 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. So water temperatures there are warming up pretty quickly. We have also seen some really quick warming happening over the Gulf of Mexico. We have a lot of warming that has taken place also over the rest of the Caribbean into the western main development region. 
However, we have not seen the warming as quick over here where I've circled this in black. And that's because, again, these trade winds remain quite strong that are coming off of Africa. And that's introducing a lot of mixing and some upwelling off of the Iberian Peninsula here. Well, pretty much all through here, we're seeing a lot of upwelling, but especially down here. And that is why we're seeing a, a plume of below average sea surface temperatures. Now, another cool thing that I wanted to show you, this relates to the upper ocean heat content. Actually, you know what? We will move that over and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So actually, let's just go back and look at our sea surface temperature anomalies. And as we can see here, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly change over the last 15 days. So anything in blue, that's what we have here. Those water temperatures have cooled off overall in the last couple of weeks, okay? Even so, they're starting to warm up quickly now, but in a long-term average, they are cooling down still. We have warmed it up still over the main development region as well as the Caribbean, as you can see here. The northern gulf has really cooled off over the last couple of weeks, and that's because of cold fronts that have swept through the area. But as of now, those water temperatures are quickly warming up and rebounding because we have southeasterly flow that is helping to infect all this warmer water from the deep tropics into the Gulf of Mexico. And then over here, the Bay of Campeche, as well as southeastern Gulf, is running well above average right now and has warmed up even further over the last couple of weeks. So now looking at our non-15 day temperature change here, this is an absolute look. Okay, this is not an average based. And so this is going to give us a different perspective. We have cooled things off pretty quickly here over the last couple of weeks. Uh, over the western main development region off of Africa as well. Look at that. Much cooler than it was just two weeks ago. And then over here, over the northwestern Caribbean, as well as the western Atlantic, we have warmed things up pretty significantly. Uh, we have warmed it up about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius uh, than it was just two weeks ago. So yeah, water temperatures here are definitely warming up. That leads us into this now. This is a look at a graphical standpoint on what our sea surface temperatures are like right now. And we can see that we are seeing ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, and ups again and down, and then we're going back up. So right now, overall, we're seeing sea surface temperatures over the last several months uh, kind of level off here right around about 0.5 to 0.6 degrees celsius when we look at the caribbean same thing only that it continues to warm up overall in the last 15 days this again is that average that i like to use kind of not looking at the exact value but kind of blending things down into a mean average and this is what we come up with Right now, it is 0.7 degrees Celsius above normal in the Caribbean. So we are definitely not below average at all. Uh, the Caribbean is locked and loaded, ready to go for the hurricane season. It's now the atmosphere's um, turn to cooperate with that. Now, looking at the Atlantic main development region, we're also warming up here still. I mean, since early May, still warming up overall in the last couple of weeks. And right now, we are running about 0.31 degrees above average. But when you round up that 8 to a 0, we're about 0.32 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. So now, I wanted to show you all a new product that I'm going to introduce in these videos for future routine tropical weather outlooks looks is the upper ocean heat content well somewhat but these are subsurface sea surface temperatures but it relates in the same way with what i'm about to show you so in a simple terms what upper ocean heat content actually is is how much heat is being stored below the surface of the ocean so you can think of this is in meters why do they use metric terms i don't even know it bothers me though, but we will be using meters in this video, unfortunately. And so zero meters is the skin. That's the very surface. That's where if you want to go swimming in the ocean, that's the layer that we swim in, zero meters. And then further down you go, it gets cooler, right? 
because less sunlight penetrates the ocean this deep. And then you get down to 500 meters, that is very deep. That's nearly in the thousands or close to it. And down here, it is much cooler, usually in the low to mid 40s in Fahrenheit. So when we think about upper ocean heat content, it's about how far down does the 80 degree isotherm or even lower than that i don't know the exact term of what determines that but i think it's 80 degrees or higher is how far that goes down and that's roughly about here now this is in the pacific basin side of things this is not in the atlantic but this is kind of an analogy of applying that same rule with the upper ocean heat content that I'm about to show you. So right here, there's a lot of upper ocean heat content being stored in the Western Pacific. Why is that? Because look at this, our 20 degree isotherm, that's this yellow line, goes pretty far down. That's quite warm all the way down to almost 200 meters. That is pretty deep, okay? And then you get up here nearly about 50 meters deep. Water temperatures are still in the 80s. So you have a lot of heat energy below the surface to support violent typhoons. If they're able to develop, they're able to upwell warm water and re-energize or replace the water that has been sucked out of the ocean in the form of spray and stuff. So that is why um, hurricanes are heat driving engines in the Atlantic. And that is because they rely on very warm sea surface temperatures, not just at the surface, but also below the surface. And that leads us into this graphic here, okay? This is the upper ocean heat content from the University of Miami. This is a very detailed high resolution image showing us what the upper ocean heat content looks like right now. And right now at the moment, things have calmed down here a little bit uh, across the deep tropics here of the Atlantic. But look at this. Over the central and northwestern Caribbean, upper ocean heat content continues to increase. Right now, we're about 100 to 120 uh, kilojoules per centimeter squared in the deep tropics and very deep below the water as well. We're seeing that upper ocean heat content. So that includes for Jamaica. That includes for the Cayman Islands. Look at the loop current here. Very easily seen. And you got the Gulf Stream up over here off the eastern seaboard. That is why I like this. And yes, the upper ocean heat content continues to increase across much of the western Gulf of Mexico as of now. Upper ocean heat content anomaly is still well above average across most of the main development region of the Caribbean. As you can see here, we got yellows, we got oranges, we even got a little plot here of red that indicates um, upper ocean heat content is well above average. And then of course that loop current running well above average. And that really makes a difference because if we get a Milton situation that crosses right over there, you know, you could see some unexplained rapid intensification or not unexplained, but unexpected. That's the word that I was looking for. Or if you get a hurricane or a tropical storm that moves in this general direction and it works its way up and makes landfall somewhere in the Panama City or Pensacola, Florida area and rides along that axis of very high upper ocean heat content, that usually spells huge trouble, if that makes sense. Most of the Gulf now, though, is running normal to slightly below average when it comes to upper ocean heat content. But we all know it's only the 19th of May, and it's not the 19th of August or the 19th of September. Now, with that being said, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion really detailed, helpful, and informative, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon, hit the like button, and also leave an awesome comment in the section below this video. It really, really helps out a lot, folks, because you guys really do love my tropical weather outlooks. I have looked at a lot of the metadata. You guys really are enjoying these outlooks, and we will continue to provide these as often as we can possible here on the YouTube channel. And boy, I cannot wait to go live on a landfalling tropical storm or hurricane for you guys because we're going to make it possible to where we have over 40 live cameras, over 40 live cameras out in ahead of these landfalling systems. You can only do that if you do subscribe though. As always, 
Thank you guys for watching my routine tropical weather outlook and discussion here for Monday, May 19th. Have a great rest of your Monday. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.